kind of carousel going throughout. Um, so zone out whenever I've calmed down, uh, zone into that, <laughs> or both at the same time, simultaneously. Um, so I'm going to be reading a little bit from Kikania, the anthology that Steve mentioned. Um, but first, if I can, a small, um, very brief, limited, crazy about the artists I'm going to be talking about, which means like a dossier. Um, and comparing this to the idea of gardens that we've looked at, uh, asylums, um, public spaces, Cabaret, um, with its lustful automata, um, we're going to become more, uh, we'll go rather a bit more to a domestic sphere, maybe a room a little bit like this one. Um, and if we think about this room in particular, I'm sure you've all noticed this artwork on the wall, uh, this kind of net um, that's by Faye Nicholson. Um, and in a way, that's quite a nice image to think about while I'm speaking. The idea of nets, networks, safety nets, but also constrictor. Um, it's appropriate to think about networks because to research and to respond personally um, always means to come from a community, not only in terms of an anthology that you write for, um, but also it's quite weird to hear having my dad in the audience and also uh, a former teacher of mine from school. Um, there will be some attempts at uh, Austria, and so any projectile missiles coming from someone is actually far better than I do what I should be saying. Um, the idea of networks and of art and Brontia Cola Pinella. Um, to research and to respond is often to find links or interstitial spaces between figures. That's between those figures and you, the writer, the respondent or respondee. And to both research and to respond, the figure of Brontia Cola Pinella is to some extent to rely upon networks and upon association, and then free association, name dropping, counting the empty chairs in a salon. And in writing the poems, you'll see there is association and to make certain free association. The opportunity for research was afforded by the Picania anthology, an anthology with its etymology, the Hellenistic Greek, a gathering of flowers. It meant for me to begin with looking at the paintings, some of which we see scrolling now. But in short, to give a quick praise of uh, Cola Pinel's life, is to be confronted by networks, and parrots, and book plates and a network of images, and to write about her, I found form and process and content is to ask when do networked images and ideas become digression, a structure of non-linear or training of thought. Cola Pinnell was an expressionist, as a style of typical traitors that works present the world from a subjective perspective, distorting it radically for emotional effect in order to evoke moods or ideas. I don't know how many of you were aware of her as uh, an artist, she is perhaps better known for establishing a salon in Oberwaltersdorf that was frequented by such figures as Klimt, Mahler, and Hoffman. Um, born Bronislava Pinellis, she was um, born in what is now Poland in 1863, and her father was an architect of military fortifications. Researching this fact, I turned to my laptop and scrolled through a whole gallery of bird cages that feature in her portraits. I read that she received her instruction from the sculptor Robert Rive and later studied painting with Alois de Burg, a curator, educator and artist who is perhaps best known for his supposed role in rejecting Adolf Hitler's application to join the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna. She went on to join the Art Academy for Women in Munich from 80, uh, 1885 to 1887, and her work is characterised by still lives, still lives and portraits. In the still lives, sometimes there is a dark, pulpy blettedness to the fruit on the tables this seems in contrast to the light and goldness of some of the portraits. She was also a keen xylographist, and made wood, uh, wood engravings, including book plates, for her own and other people's libraries. Um, against her family's wishes in many ways, in 1896 she married the Catholic Dr. Hugo Collar, a physician and an electrophysicist. Thoughts of rooms filled with light. At first they lived in Salzburg and Nuremberg, but they returned to Vienna in 1902. Uh, whereupon her association with secessionists began. Although women were not official members, I think I'm right in saying, uh, of the first Vienna secession, many did exhibit with the group, and she was among them. In 1904, um, the married couple inherited a house in Oberwaltersdorf and commissioned Josef Hoffmann to renovate it in secessionist style. Um, one of her most uh, famous pieces is Mariette, sometimes called the Seated Nude, um, and the figure if it does change from this, perhaps hasn't been scrolling through, um, is uh, maybe familiar to you because she's often used as a um, 
model for Klimt as well. Um, and after that was painted, in 1907, she completed the portrait of the artist's mother. Both had the flattened portraits and geometric designs of secessionist, uh, secessionist style as well. She was noted to be a friend and mentor to the young painter Sheila, and in 1918 she painted a double portrait of Sheila and his wife Edith. Um, the same year that both of Sheila's died of influenza within days of one another. Sheila was so ill, uh, Edith Sheila was so ill, but she'd been unable to attend the funeral of her friend, Colin Moser, um, at the time sitting, who had died at age 49 from throat cancer. The community, the network, the rearranged flowers. Months before he died, Sheila made a watercolour drawing of Kohler's daughter Sylvia. Reciprocity. As an adult, Sylvia Kohler became a successful painter, and in researching uh, there, there's a lovely photograph of both um, Broncia and Sylvia sitting uh, together in the garden of their house in Vienna on Hammock, which is another kind of net, I suppose. Her son Rupert became a conductor and was briefly married to Anna Marler, the uh, Austrian sculptor and second child of Gustav and Palmer Marler. So to research prompts here is to have a, uh, a gesture towards the networked image and the personal, dare I say, domestic. The idea of a salon and its centrality and the circuitry that it provides, networks, lineage, book plates, and book plates associated ideas of ownership but also implications of sharing or of something being shared, of bird cages but also the heft of wings, of being known for one's connections rather than achievements, familial, professional, her husband's job, the springtime, generation and regeneration, a rearrangement of flowers. And despite her artistic accomplishments, her critics and even her friends labelled her at the time with the stigma of being merely, and I quote uh, from Gutterstone in 1934, the talented wife of a prominent husband. And even though she participated in numerous national and international ex exhibitions, her name is not nearly as well known as those of her counterparts and peers. I hope that that stitching will come loose and the network will be all the stronger for it. And it was a complete pleasure and privilege to engage with her work through my poem for the anthology, which I will read some of now. That's a good one, right? So. <laughs> Um, and I do encourage you to pick up a copy of the book, um, especially if no one's going to chase after you. <laughs> when titles attendant parentheses, bloom and still and then preliminary study for another still life, tease the yearn yarn out from eyelash to lower ribcage, tying the two together, can there really be cause for three letter L's to be packed so close together? Bloom and still and then. How still do you need to be? How lulled by the picted word and its letter L's? How outstate? My mother arranges flowers for her church and tells me that an odd number of stalks will always look more effective than any even number, and I associate irises with the word widening, and the clucking their stems make time that I carry them to your doorway, hands filled with hopeful gifts, and someone waved across the road in greeting, and I, holding the flowers and limlock, had to weave a response with the whole side of my body and pivot, causing the irises to shake their heads. My mother explains that the flowers should remind me of Greek myths and of rainbows, but we're in the kitchen now clearing up spilt turmeric and I'm not in the mood. And should have pronounced it turmeric. <laughs> the flowers tie a room together, your mother dying with her back to me facing the surface of the sun itself. The birds in the rib cage slash eyelash parenthesis approach your hands, hopeful of gifts, elmy at a palette's length. What is it with the snow, BKP? What is it with the irises? What is it with the apples that look so ringable? CF fists, CF laundry, and what is it with the bird cage and the turned back? The good hostess ties the salon together. The door to the study opens on its hinges, unoiled. The hinges seek out the letters BKP quite distinctly. The door to the bird cage swings close on its hinges, unoiled, pronounces the letter BKP indistinctly. Kinderpotrat and Betchen in the downiness that comes with children, such young birds caught quiet in blankets. Fledgling, glossy, lustig, wind hot and tooting, we cover their cages with silk and give them mirrors for distraction's sake, and come across self portraits in brown rooms, brown studies where the palette is the most alive thing for miles. A beaky cream, a parrot hand scaled over as hands scale and crack with paint. 
It would be better to wash these before the guests arrived, as birds were feather tied, good room, toss, ether, hither, tethered together. My only woman with blue headscarf, date unknown, my Sylvia with bird cage, circa 1905, my city, 1907, my still life with red elephant, seed, 1920. The letter C stands in for the nookness of shadows and has never had a room nor an elephant look more comfortable. Here I am, looking at your arriving, as though beyond a door with a pane of dimpled glass, or with eyes sun from sleep, for it glazed in frame in parentheses, circadian eyelashes that open doors with dimpled, frosted glass. And tell us again about the one with the kettle, or the parrot in the hand valued at two in the date unknown, where Damon Academy has all the lint of me turning in the street at the sight of you, irises beneath my arm shaking their heads, and apples clenching in my hands. My mother would tell me that a naked woman boasted what I choose to see as a halo to stop the slouching. It is a squared off halo, a golden halo, a pancake sun with all the untended anxieties I have for naked women and the correct plural nouns. Halos with an E, halo spelt without. Is it me you're looking to fast forward apple hand and all these irises and birds on the brain and the moon and jokes about honey? We should be uneven and top heavy like crows crowned into frame, unmanned for a good while yet, and the birds are as good as we've ever got going when skin can skim like that. Lifting off the upper layer of paint, the dermis with a flat handled thing that reminds one of hummingbirds more than it does a paint knife, leveling away the grey shirt, lift off bright annular area around the cathode ray, annihilation, attendant jokes about breathing, anxiety about the use of am, getting emphatic, m haptic, and dowdy breathless when I'm sitting like with parrots in the other room. And parrots might learn how to laugh, as painters' models must learn how to breathe undetected. And unhalf angels without skirts, and earthly as in muddied open doors by association. Never had a parrot with a halo before, and I dream of training one to say halo into a telephone receiver. <laughs> the telephone is shaped like a daffodil head, clarion call waiting, and we can use it for listening to the opera and for tapping the blunt, remarkable lips of our parrot. The wires buzz with arrangements as I attend to my unwhistlerish, unhamishoy, greyed out, shoulder turned, mother knit, sun uncoddled. The mother sits on the surface of the sun. No parrots there, and fewer elephants. But the squared off halos as might rise above kitchens or headboards. Let's talk about that beyond the finch wire and beyond the telephone, the serried flesh about your hips, the hand of butt beneath the lift, the signature, the shadowing, red hair appled, russeted with elephants no bigger than fishes. I have it on authority that the idiom to make a mountain out of a molehill is als eine Mucha eine Elefanten machen, uh, wherein elephants crumple, gnat born. There's still a buzz on the line, and her husband's watch chains catch the light in ways different to the metallic joists of my paint box. I mean hinges, one bit working only with the other. Nothing to do with being in each other's shadow, but all about light, with complementary soft fish, kettles, parrots. The old looker there for the singing, and flight is the least remarkable thing about them, marbled and alabastered and bounceable, and not entirely uneasy to trace. Thank you. <laughs>